Good morning and a very warm welcome to worship at Fountain Hall Church at the Stockett on this not very pleasant June day. Welcome especially to any visitors here and also to those watching the recorded service at home. And I'm very pleased to welcome back Reverend Bob Brown who's taking our service today. It's a privilege to have you with us, Bob. Tanya is still unwell and off work, so I would ask you please to, to keep her in your prayers. I'd like to mention a few of the intimations. On Tuesday the 18th of June, we have Lively Minds at the Cross. The talk is a musical journey given by Moira Doherty, a hugely talented soprano and member of the Fountain Hall Church Choir. So do let Alan Patterson know if you wish to attend. Then Friday 21st of June is Make Music Day, when the Granite City Chorus, who are based all year round at the Stockett, are presenting a free concert here in our sanctuary featuring Granite City Chorus, Silver City Singers and Guests. This is sure to be a lot of fun and it's at 7.30 next Friday. Then on Saturday 22nd of June, we have a wonderful charity concert here in the Stockett Sanctuary, a concert for Ukraine featuring the Orchestra Nova conducted by Gareth John with the Fountain Hall Church Choir and guests. And we're hoping for a big attendance to support Ukraine. So please consider coming along at 7.30 p.m. next Saturday. And next Sunday, 23rd of June, we have a united service for everyone at the cross. So there's no service here at the Stockett next week. Then on Tuesday the 25th of June, we have the Summer Cafe Church in the Garden Lounge here at the Stockett at 2.30 p.m. with a speaker, Jen MacDonald, of the Bonnemure Green Community Trust. So come prepared to have a walk around our gardens. Then on Saturday 29th of June, we have our next family fun event at the Stockett from 10 till 12. We really would like some more volunteers to, to help with this. So if you can help, please add your name to the sign-up sheet at the back after the service or contact Edita in the office. And finally, I would ask you all to remember we are celebrating the first birthday of Fountain Hall Church this month and we're inviting members to make first birthday gifts and review their giving to the church. Everything is explained in the stewardship leaflets which are available for those who haven't already received one. Thank you. I'm now delighted to hand over to Bob to lead us in worship. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you to Alison for the welcome. Always good to come and be here with you. I'm sorry that it's Tanya's ill health that's brought me here, but we wish her well and hope that she'll be back very soon. As the rain and snow come down from heaven and do not return till they have watered the earth, so shall the word God sent not return to him empty without accomplishing his purpose or succeeding in the task for which he came. Let us worship God. Hymn number 484, Great God, your love has called us here.
Let us pray. The word we call you by can be dead and meaningless, O God, a vague, uncertain reference to something beyond. But for us, it is a living word, pointing to your active presence in all our experience of living, a challenging word, requiring us to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, an inspiring word that raises our spirits and lifts our hearts to focus not on things that are seen which are passing away, but on unseen things which are eternal. May this word made flesh in Jesus direct the course of our lives and make us strong in faith, sure in hope, and constant in love. May he help us be free from arrogance and self-righteousness and never harsh in our judgment of others. May he turn us outwards to stand for right against wrong, truth against lies, and justice for the neighbor in need. May he stiffen our resolve when we face the slings and arrows of life and walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And may he empower us to serve the cause of your kingdom and live to the glory of your name today and all the days of our lives. So let it be, O God, for your love's sake, as we say together our family prayer, our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, boys and girls. Girls, where's the boys? I'm not here. I'm going to tell you, I came here yesterday. And some people might think I came yesterday because I'm old and confused, <laughs> and I thought it was Sunday yesterday. But that's not true. I came yesterday to hear a man play the piano. And he was terrific. And I sat on that side so that I could see his hands moving on the piano. And in some of the songs he played, his hands moved so fast, I couldn't believe he could do it. Amazing. Any of you learning a musical instrument? What are you learning? The piano! Oh, if you had seen this man yesterday, that would have inspired me. He was terrific. It's tough though, isn't it, learning the piano? Because you have to go away on your own and slog it out. Stick in. I'll encourage you to stick in. Do that. When I was watching him, I thought, this man is terrific. He must practice a lot. Because you couldn't be as good as he was unless you had put in an awful lot of hours practicing so that he was able to do it as well as he was. It was amazing. I didn't get a chance to speak to him afterwards, but if I had, I would have asked him, how many hours a day do you practice on the piano? Because he couldn't have done that without practicing very hard. But that's true of anything. I think if you're learning a musical instrument, you've got to practice. Or if you're learning a game, if you want to be a good swimmer or you want to be good at any game, you've got to practice it so that you become better and you keep improving. But I think that's true also about being a good person 
We need to practice being good. You can do that. You can practice being kind. You can practice being helpful. Practice being all the things that God wants us to be so that we become the kind of people he wants us to be. So I always encourage the people to practice these things. Practice being good. Practice being helpful. Practice being kind. You can do that at home. Easy. And we all think we should probably do it more. We're going to sing a song now that says that God will help us if we practice these things. And it's a kind of prayer song, so I'm going to say to people, just stay seated and sing this short song, Spirit of the Living God, Fall Afresh on Me. The Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Psalms, Psalm 92, reading verses 1 to 4 and then verses 12 to 15. A psalm, a song for the Sabbath day. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night to the music of the lute and the harp, to the melody of the lyre. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work. At the works of your hands I sing for joy. The righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. In old age, they still produce fruit. They are always green and full of sap, showing that the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. 
The New Testament reading is taken from the Gospel according to St. Mark. St. Mark chapter 4, reading from verses 26 to 34. The parable of the growing seed. He also said, the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. The parable of the mustard seed. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. Yet, when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. Amen, and may God add his blessing to these readings from his holy word. Hymn 473, Thy kingdom come on bended knee, the passing ages pray. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. In the past week, both the Labour Party and the Tory Party published their election manifestos. 
telling us what they will do if they are elected to office. The media, to save us reading all that, was keen to bring it down into a few words. And so we were told that the Tory manifesto is all about tax cuts and the Labour manifesto is about growth and change. Which led me to think if we were trying to reduce the gospel story into a neat phrase, what would we say it was about? And I want to suggest this morning that it is about the kingdom of God. That Jesus' message was about the arrival of the kingdom of God. Which in ordinary speak is what the world would look like if God was in charge and not the rulers of this world. The Jewish people at the time of Jesus were very hopeful that God would come to rule because they had been subjected to oppression and subjugation by foreign powers for 800 years. The Assyrians were followed by the Babylonians and they were followed by the Persians and they were followed by the Greeks. And now at the time of Jesus, it was the Romans. The Romans ruled the Holy Land, as we call it. And ironically enough, what the Jews then wanted was what the Palestinians want today. They wanted to be able to live as free people in their own country, not under subjugation, not under oppression by a foreign power. They believed that one day God would act, and God would act to set his people free. And this is a hope that runs all through the Old Testament. And when God acted, things would be totally different. It would be all change. The Romans would be driven out. They would no longer be subjected to the cruelty and oppression of the foreign power. It would be their land and they would live in it as they chose. So when they heard Jesus saying, as he does the first words he speaks in Mark's Gospel, when they heard him say the kingdom of God is at hand, they must have been puzzled. Or they must have thought, he's out his mind because things were exactly the same as they had always been. Herod Antipas, who was a puppet king of the Romans, still ruled Galilee. Pontius Pilate, a Roman appointee to govern Syria, eh, to govern Samaria and Judea, was still in power. The Emperor Tiberius, Tiberius Julius Caesar Augustus, was still the top man in Rome. They were still subjected to the Roman system of taxation. They were still experienced subsistence living, so that you would go down to the marketplace and hope to be hired as a day laborer if you were lucky. They were still subject to the same cruelty as they had always known. So how could Jesus talk about the kingdom of God being here? How could he speak about God's rule being established when everything was the same as it had always been? And his answer is basically, you've got it wrong. 
God will not intervene, but God will work with you to change things if you will work with him on his terms. And his terms are that it must be non-violent in a world of violence. It must be inclusive in a world where so many are excluded and everything is divisive. It must be people committed to faith rather than the practice of religion. And Jesus said these things because he belonged to the great prophetic tradition of the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, the prophets said things that people did not want to hear, as Jesus did. In the Old Testament, they performed symbolic actions, as Jesus did when he cleansed the temple or when he rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. And like the prophets of old, Jesus said that the poor, the vulnerable, the weak are the focus of God's concern. And they must have a place in the new world that we're trying to build. And we must stand against a system that grinds the poverty into the poor and keeps them down. Like the prophets of old, he said, we must be committed to justice and justice for those who are experiencing injustice. And like the prophets of old, he stressed that the main thing was the motive of the heart rather than the outward appearance. That the show of religion all the piety and holy days and feast days were nothing to God if they were not matched by the act of participation in God's style of rule. And the two stories we read this morning fit into that context. Two stories about the kingdom of God about what, God, what things would be like if God ruled and we trusted God. The first story is a story about a sower sowing seed. But the stress is on the inactivity of the sower once he's done that. He sows the seed and he trusts that the ground will produce the growth. Saying to us that we as the followers of Jesus, our business is to sow the seeds of faith and trust the God for the growth. That's difficult for us in the present day because in our denomination and in most denominations we don't see much sign of growth. So it is hard to trust to God that if we keep the faith and if we live the faith, he can use that to make things grow again. But that is our faith. There is no quick fix to the predicament we're in. We're not going to produce magically a hundred new ministers tomorrow. We're not going to produce magically a somebody to bankroll the church and solve our financial problems. Our business is to keep the faith and to trust in God that he can use what we are doing in his world. The second story is a story about a very small seed growing to become a big bush. 
The mustard seed becomes a mustard tree. And that says to us, I think, that the empires of the world will come and go. Rome, as it did, will fade away. The British Empire, as it was, will fade away, as we know it has. But what continues is God's commitment and God's commitment to his church and to his world. And again, that's a very challenging story for us in our present context. That the small seed of faith which we might sow in our society, in our community, in our country can never become a big bush. But that is our faith. And our faith is that ultimately God's purposes will prevail. Because God is not God if his purposes do not prevail. And that is the faith we hang on to. So this morning's readings are difficult because they talk about the faithfulness of God's people and the growth it will produce. Difficult because we have to hold on to the conviction that ultimately God's purposes of love and justice will prevail over cruelty and lies and violence. But that is our faith. So we ask God for the courage to stay with the faith and practice the faith in that belief that he will use it to serve his purposes. And that he and we together, not he alone or us alone, will achieve that purpose in the end. Amen. And may God bless to us this word preached in his name, and to his name be the glory and the praise. Let us pray. Gracious and generous God, you nourish the world day by day. Entrust us to care for it and hand it on in good order to those who come after. Thank you for this gift and the trust placed in us. Bless us now that we do not pass on to our children's children spoiled lands and polluted seas. Do not allow us to leave to generations yet unborn a wasteland of our making. Rather, in gratitude to you and concern for them, may we tend lovingly this garden of your creation. Hear us today as we hold before you those set in authority over us. May they be motivated not by glory for themselves, but by a determination to serve the common good. May they see with clear eyes and be able to take the long view. Set your face against all who would rule by fear and intimidation. Tear down tyrants from their thrones and defeat all who seek their own ends by dealing in deception and peddling lies. We ask your blessing on leaders of faith communities. May they foster compassion among followers of their own faith. Promote respect and understanding of people of other faiths and help to create a world where difference is celebrated and people of goodwill work together for the common well-being. As always, we behold before you those known personally to us who are struggling to cope as, for whatever reason, 
They face dark times or hard choices. In the silence, we name them now. May they know the support of faithful friends and the peace that comes from faith in you. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hymn 710, I have a dream, a man once said. Now let us go in peace and keep alive the faith, and may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the company of the Holy Spirit be with you and stay with you this day and forevermore.